Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Tina Parskell. I'm with the Colorado Community College System. I joined here today with two of my colleagues to talk about the impact of our zero textbook cost courses on course success rates and the student demographic information, some preliminary trends. Um, next slide, Brittany. Great. Um, I want to acknowledge that with respect that the land that we are presenting on today in Colorado is the traditional and ancestral homelands of a number of indigenous peoples, including the Apache, Arapaho, Cheyenne, Pueblo, Shoshone, Kiowa, and Ute nations, tribes, and peoples. So we honor them today through our good work and recognize the good work of those, of those folks. Next slide. A little bit about us. Um, the Colorado Community College System is the largest higher education system in the state of Colorado. We're comprised of 13 colleges in both rural and urban settings. In terms of OER, CCCS pioneered our OER and ZTC uh, work in 2011. And in fall, to give you a sense of the magnitude of our work, in fall 2019, we have had over 26,000 students enrolled in OER courses, saving over $2.3 million in textbooks. We also all represent CCC Online, the Colorado Community College is online, so the data you'll be seeing is focused on CCC Online. CCC Online is the consortium of the 13 colleges in CCCS, as well as Dawson Community College. Um, and to tell you a little bit about our OER, in the last academic year, we had over 23,000 students enrolled in either an OER or a zero textbook cost course, which is essentially 48% of our overall enrollment for that year. And we saved students over $1 million in textbook or digital content fees. Next slide. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Amy Kahn. I was muted, I apologize for that. So today we're gonna to be presenting on how the impact of switching to uh, ZTC course materials has on the completer success rates and different students' demographic characteristics. My name is Amy Kahn and I am the Dean of Academic Affairs here at CCC Online. We leveraged the Q data for this uh, research project. And we were looking at income, whether people were Pell eligible, gender, whether they, whether the individuals are define themselves as female or male, and first generation students. Now I'll turn it over to Brittany Dudek. Hey everyone, um, I'm Brittany Dudek. I'm the manager for OER and library at CCC Online. Um, so what we did, um, we looked at a series of courses. Here are the 12 courses listed here. Um, and to look at the completer success rates and failure rates, um, including withdrawal rates, for over 11,500 students enrolled in these courses. The reason why we selected this set of courses uh, as compared to the, the breadth that we have available, um, we were looking at a specific academic year. Um, so it's academic year 18 that all of these courses went live in. They were all also taught um, for three consecutive semesters with traditional course materials, and then three consecutive semesters with zero textbook cost materials. Um, all of these courses also were created using our traditional model, um, which is a team approach. We have um, a centralized design and a master course model at CCC Online. So these courses were all developed with the instructional designer, the faculty subject matter expert, um, and then with assistance from the library, the associate dean, and the department chair for that division. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a centralized course design and a master course model. We're also a quality matters institution. Um, so all of our courses uh, follow that template. One other thing that's important to note is that regardless of OER, ZTC, um, or traditional materials, all of our students have access to the course materials on the first day regardless. Um, so we really were just trying to see what the difference was when it was zero textbook cost materials. 
So we'll show some of the trends, um, but I do want to uh, start by saying that we do, um, what we've learned since, since looking at these trends is that we need to do some significant more analysis on the data um, because there's a lot of great information here and we need to delve deeper into it. So first, the overall completer success rates of our courses, um, specifically those 12 courses that I mentioned. You can see here that um, overall, the pass rates went up um, 6.5%, and then there was a decrease of 17% in our uh, fail rates. Um, this shows us that there's a trend that ZTC course materials in the same courses um, do improve the completer success rates. So we then wanted to take um, a look at the different areas that Amy had mentioned earlier, the Pell eligibility, the um, uh, first generation students, um, and then um, female or male identified students. Um, here's a list of all of the courses. You can see here on this left side um, that there are the traditional materials um, for the Pell eligibility pass rates. Um, next is the zero textbook cost Pell eligibility pass rates. And then finally, we have the difference. The reason we use the term ZTC as opposed to OER is that most of our courses make use of a combination of open educational resources, items that we've created in-house, and then library materials. So they're not true OER in, the, in that sense, um, but they are zero textbook cost to students. Um, overall, there was a 1.56% change um, in the ZTC pass rates. Um, and you can see here that some of them, you know, Bio 201 is, you know, had an incredible difference, um, a great increase in their pass rates. Um, and then some of the other courses did drop just a little bit. Um, you can see here Sociology 101, Bio 106, um, and Humanities, they dropped. What's interesting too is that the trends along the pass rates um, increasing or decreasing um, holds true for the first gen students as well as the male and female identified students. Um, you can see here Bio 201 still has this fantastic, oops, fantastic increase. Um, and then we do have a couple of courses where first gen students did worse once we transferred to ZTC. Um, overall though, there was a 1.3% increase um, in the pass rates for these first gen students. Next is our female identified students. Um, again, you can see there's a, a really consistent trend across the different courses that did well and improved pass rates. Um, and then the ones that um, had a decrease in their pass rates. So the same thing for female here. Um, there's a couple of courses, sociology and biology um, that decreased for our female identified students, but um, the rest of them did increase. Overall, there was an increase in the pass rates though of 8.7%. So next um, in the final category that we're gonna share today are the male identified students. Um, you can see that the male identified students actually did better in Bio 201, which all of our other groups didn't. Um, so that's something very interesting. And then also um, kind of the consistent, you know, the consistent areas where one group did better than the other. Um, it seems the male identified students actually performed better in courses that the other groups did not. Um, so what this tells us is that we need to figure out why, right? Um, why, are, why are we not helping all of our students? Um, even though there is that overall general trend of an increase in pass rates across these different demographic areas, um, we need to figure out why and what can we do to improve the pass rates in all of our students and not just um, in these very specific groups. Brittany, there's a question about in the chat about what is the average N number for each of these groups? So we looked at 11,500 students across these groups. Um, I don't have the individual section or course sizes. Um, and I don't have handy the total number of male identified students. Um, if we have time at the end, I can pull back up my document and grab that. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right, so on to our next steps. Um, obviously, uh, our results indicate that we need a lot more analysis with this data. Um, specifically, why are some of our pass rates increasing for some student population groups and why are they decreasing for others? What can we do to improve the equity in those courses for all of those students? Um, one area that we didn't have a chance to, um, to delve into yet is the race and ethnicity category. Um, that category is, 
a giant, uh, a giant category, um, especially when you divide it by all of the different races and ethnicities that are um, collected by the Q data or by iPads. Um, and so that requires just a, a, a much longer um, presentation um, and also um, some analysis for those, um, specifically when we're looking at these 11,000 students. Um, and then Amy, Tina, would you like to jump in with any of these, any other thoughts on next steps? Absolutely. Um, sorry, oh, I didn't put my video back on. Yeah, one of the things that uh, we feel is uh, quite important here is looking at how race and ethnicity um, are handled or managed or uh, apologies or are benefited by the OER uh, that we're using. So we believe that this study helps us to see the increase in pass rates for individuals when they have access to their material early on. And in particular, as you could see from the data that we shared, it was impacting those in more vulnerable communities, people that are, were in need of Pell Grants, and specifically um, even those from uh, uh, underserved communities who were in need of Pell Grants. So we're excited about the results and certainly need more analysis. But as we look to lower the equity gap and increase our um, success rates for vulnerable students, we're excited about the possibilities of what that e OER can do for our community. Tina, That's did you it. want to add something? Sure. Um, this really um, aligns with our strategic intent and really who we are as a community college system. Um, not only looking at the impact of OER and, and the impact on individual students of different demographics and, and access to education, but it also really gives us an opportunity to look at affordability on, on a broader scale. Um, I was just in the previous session about the pandemic. And, and one of the things that I think would be really um, interesting to take a look at, and I know just tangentially, we, we've seen some feedback from our students that you know, our, our marginalized students um, really were more severely impacted. So what can we do to leverage not only OER and ZTC moving forward, um, but also the different kind of pedagogical approaches that we've had to innovate over the past several months as, as a result of world events. So uh, stay tuned, Brittany will keep, yeah. will keep <laughs> researching. Yeah, so yeah. one of the things Absolutely. that we've started looking at too is well, we have, Oh, go ahead. And in addition, we also think that it's uh, important that as we um, garner OER for our classrooms, that we also leverage the knowledge that we have about um, making the, the coursework um, look and feel and, and be more humanized, more individualized for the students' experiences. So we have been working hard to assure that the language that we're using in the classes, the images that we're selecting, and um, the type of questions that we ask are more broad. And we're thoughtful about the communities that are taking our classes and hoping to see themselves reflected in the courseware. So OER actually gives us the opportunity so that a textbook would not give us from that perspective as well. So we're cognizant of that as well when we're putting together our OER material. Do we have questions from the group? I know we have about five minutes left. You're welcome, Robert. <laughs> I don't see any in the chat. So one of the things that I, I do want to mention is that the data that we shared today um, for all of these courses was over one, one academic year. Um, we've actually hit the point now where we can pull the two full academic years. Um, so that'll be very interesting to see as we do um, maintenance on our courses, we update, we, um, we make changes and we improve them. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this was the first year of zero textbook cost for these courses. Um, and it'll be really interesting to see that as we go through and continue to mature our processes um, and mature our, our coursework and our course uh, materials, how does that change um, the, the pass rates for these students? 
um, I think as we all do um, pretty much any of the work in the OER field, as it becomes more mature, um, you know, we have, we, we do better, we do better work. So um, we're proud of the, the increase in the pass rates overall, um, but I know that we wanna do what we can to increase, increase them more, but also um, increase them for, for different student populations. Absolutely, thank you, Brittany. I think well, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for your right. time and your and your great responses. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I put a link in the chat to the Global Connect so you can continue the conversation there if you like. Thank you very much. Thank Some you. Interesting statistics.